hiljaa sun. All right, I think it is time that we can get this show on the road. Let me switch to my face here. So welcome everybody to the first IDBBN webinar on predictive marketing. The first of a series of multiple webinars to come on this topic. Uh, today talking about uh, the very preliminary stuff, the introduction to the whole topic and what predictive marketing is all about. My name is Henrik Lagerkrantz, uh, Vice President of Technical Excellence at IDBBN and I will be your host for this webinar here. It's a live session so you may post questions, comments, all that good stuff in the YouTube chat in, in your browser there. That does require you to be logged in, but uh, presumably you all have Google login, so you can leave questions and comments and ans not, not answers, that is my job then, but uh, use that to your maximum potential there. Uh, we will have a session at the end of this webinar where we'll go through the questions with Tanya there in the background and I'll answer uh, to my best abilities. But uh, without further ado, I will change back to a more beautiful setting of the slides here. And uh, we can get started with our agenda for today. Well, machine learning, artificial intelligence, predictive marketing, that is the gist of what we're going to be talking about today. Going to through the differences between them, uh, the different types of utilization in marketing and sales perspective in particular, and then looking at predictive marketing as a process and going through how one could get started if you're not on this journey yet. Uh, where we'll be looking at project scopes and costs on a, on a top level, and then uh, how IDBBN could be of assistance to you on your journey with predictive marketing and and so on. Uh, so that you know, uh, we will be we're recording this session and we will be sharing all materials uh, to everybody who has registered on our website. We'll be sending you emails post post event. So uh, no need to take screenshots or anything if that would be something you're being inclined to do. So we'll be sending you all of this stuff later on. Uh, it's going to be an action-packed session, 30 minutes plus 15 minutes for a little bit of the question and answers operations. Might be tight for time, but uh, Tanya will be uh, showing me how I'm doing with my time there, and I'll, I'll uh, keep it up so that you will not be uh, exceeding your time. But um, thank you very much for joining me this morning, and, and let's get started. Um, yes, so this is me. Uh, much more beautiful picture there than what was on the webcam there, but um, I'm the uh, Vice President of Technical Excellence and a partner at IDBBN. Uh, if the operations has to do with marketing technology or marketing technology strategy, I'm usually a part of those operations. Also specialist in the GDPR area, uh, now looking into the e-privacy regulation and I'm heading our machine learning and predictive marketing team. Um, it wouldn't be a free webinar without some sponsored content from IDBBN here. So here's our, our client lists um, with uh, which we do marketing automation operations from um, different ends of the spectrum from uh, planning, consulting to actual implementation uh, integrations and all that. Uh, which then leads us to our broad spectrum of services that we offer in the marketing technology realm from consultancy, professional services, marketing services, implementation and everything, content production, all the creative stuff that uh, you would expect from a uh, creative agency, uh, technical expertise and implementation and integrations and 
uh, custom web applications, web development, um, of course, predictive analytics and machine learning, uh, and of course, training and support for, for all your marketing technologies and platforms and, and the ongoing operations. So a very broad spectrum of services we offer in the marketing technology domain. But let's get back to the actual beef. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, predictive marketing, hot topics, some might say uh, overhyped buzzwords, and actually just looked at some studies where uh, a company had done a, uh, a take on the most overhyped terms, and artificial intelligence uh, was number one there in, in the marketing domain. So definitely uh, we need to talk about what we mean with artificial intelligence, machine learning, when we're talking about this topic, because all the ambiguity around this topic is making, uh, has a negative impact on, on all the discussions that are, are going around this. So uh, I wanted to attach this also from the perspective of making clear what is the context with which we are talking about things here, uh, because there might be uh, different interpretations on the topic uh, so, so that you understand what is my take on things. So, uh, looking at this slide here on the on the left, we have the artificial artificial intelligence stack, so to say. So, uh, the the largest domain there is artificial intelligence, which basically is any set of techniques or technologies that enable computers to mimic human behavior. And this artificial intelligence is a larger umbrella for all kinds of operations from. Google self-driving cars and, and all the uh, non-marketing related artificial intelligence uh, as well, which marketing, uh, I mean, a machine learning is then a subset of artificial intelligence. So that is more a narrow, more uh, defined scope of techniques that uh, use and leverage statistical methods that enable computers to improve with experience and, and do the learning part from, from your data set. We'll be talking about machine learning later on uh, in this slide deck, so more about that later on. And then deep learning is basically, again, a subset of machine learning, which is basically more advanced, more um, calculation and computation intensive uh, operations, the, the deep end, so to say, of, of the machine learning pool uh, with more advanced capabilities and um, it has a requirement for a little bit higher amounts of data and and uh, computational power as, as mentioned. But all of these are still under the artificial intelligence domain, um, machine learning and deep learning in that sense. So that is the hierarchy there. But when we're talking about predictive marketing, uh, I put marketing here as a separate circle on the, uh, on the right there. And I um, categorized marketing here more towards uh, operations in marketing that you could utilize marketing automation in because, uh, again, marketing itself is a little bit uh, ambiguous that what does it actually mean? Is branding part of it and, and so forth? So uh, marketing, a big set of operations and tasks and uh, processes there, but then at the conjunction there is predictive marketing and especially uh, marketing processes um, in conjunction with machine learning. That is what we're talking about today when we're talking about predictive marketing. So marketing operations that utilize and leverage machine learning and to some extent artificial intelligence features. So, so that's what we're talking about here. Machine learning then, uh, that will be at more uh, in the, the center for uh, conversation today. So a little bit more on, on that process. So what, what that is and, and what does it actually mean? So here on the left, we have a flow diagram or, or what, are, what these boxes would be called. But basically it all starts with uh, gathering data and creating a comprehensive data set of uh, descriptive features and then a target label and and the best example to make this more concrete would be basically we have image recognition here and then uh, data sampling uh, Excel file and and a uh, image collection of uh, 
chihuahuas and, and uh, muffin, blueberry muffins there. So basically, this would be your comprehensive data set that you have gathered uh, that all this information you want to use to teach your computer, your machine, uh, make the, the machine learning part happening. Uh, you would have, for instance, with these dog pictures here, dog and muffin, you would introduce, let's say, a million pictures of dogs and muffins, and you would have that as the descriptive feature, so uh, the computer would learn from those images, and then you would have told it which uh, of these images is a dog and which one of them is a, um, is a muffin, and you use that information basically to teach that please do machine here, please try to recognize muffins and, and dogs accordingly. And that would be the machine learning part of that uh, with images, but with data, uh, for instance, if you're looking into uh, prospective buyers and so forth, you would gather gather all, all sorts of data relevant to that process from your own uh, first party data, second party or third party, um, depending on what is sensible there, and draft a large well, I, I would call it Excel file, but a data set here that would contain all the features, um, variables that you would have of a an individual, a person, uh, a profile or a company or anything that you're trying to uh, make the machine learning algorithm recognize and predict. And that would be uh, all the data you would have and of that, you would take a training data set, which could be, for instance, 60% of all the gathered data. You give that to the machine learning algorithm um, without telling what is actually uh, uh, the, the target labels there, uh, getting it to, to learn and identify, for instance, the which one of these uh, is a dog and which one of them is a, a muffin or which one of these is a buying customer which one of them is a churning customer and so forth and then uh, you would test uh, the data model uh, with uh, with the actual outcomes with the targeted labels attached to that to make sure that okay whatever the machine learned did it actually predict um, properly uh, accurately with the data that you got and out of this uh, this process you would uh, once fine-tuned and then you get to a state where your prediction model and your data set is such that uh, it produces uh, high enough confidence uh, predictions basically you could use that prediction model to insert uh, new images or new data sets of individuals leads customers whatever you would want to predict and, and get a result uh, from, from that uh, model that um, what is the likelihood of an outcome in a, a future time period or uh, what, what is a label for this particular uh, sample that was fed in here. So basically what we do is we gather all data that we can, then we train the model with this data and test it and then we can uh, utilize that model to perform predictions. So this is the machine learning part, but then what you do with those predictions is then uh, up to you. Uh, and of course, that is the marketing and sales department then to uh, take the process forward from, from there. A little bit on the applications of machine learning, a uh, few simple categories here in sense of operations, classification, clustering, regression, recommendation, and anomaly detection. Classification, quite close to those examples on the previous slide there. So categorize a subject into two or more predetermined categories. So basically feeding it information uh, that please do recognize if this is a dog or a muffin, or then you could have all the dog species and all the uh, different food categories and, and your machine would then uh, categorize uh, the input into one or more categories. But use case examples here in marketing especially, you could feed in all your database which you have uh, and then try to get out buyer persona definitions uh, and trigger persona based marketing based off of that. So looking into data uh, instead of uh, 
what your data tells you what a person uh, in which buyer persona category do they actually fit in instead of doing a guesstimation or, or some sort of uh, approximation there. Well, clustering then is basically classification on steroids. Uh, you can give it uncategorized uh, data and recognize the different groups or categories there. So uh, without telling it uh, what these categories are, uh, it could produce uh, clusters um, or, for instance, your use cases, uh, segments from your database, uh, or it could analyze your website or document contents and, and uh, tell you what groups and categories are, are mostly present there and do tagging and the categorization in that sense. Regression is then more a numeric uh, exercise where we predict a numeric value, for instance, turnovers or profitabilities. Uh, you could use that for time frame predictions for uh, service or maintenance scheduling, uh, trying to look at the data that when, uh, when would be a best and most relevant time for this machine to be serviced without it having to break in between. Well, recommendation, quite many of you are familiar with that. So evaluate which products a customer might like or be likely to purchase. So do recommendations based on your behavior or uh, other characteristics that you've uh, portrayed. Uh, E-commerce platforms, of course, utilize this. And if you would have a upsell, cross-sell recommendation, uh, that would be CRM connected, most likely. Anomaly detection, uh, outliers, exceptions, finding uh, them from norm more normal data sets. <clears throat> Moving forward here to actual applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in marketing domain. Uh, I won't go through all of these, but uh, this basically highlights the fact that artificial intelligence applications uh, are very much fewer in amount than machine learning uh, processes or operations. So basically two categories, uh, categories here with artificial intelligence in uh, only three of them, artificial uh, AI generated content, voice search, uh, intelligent chatbots, and all the others then are leveraging machine learning. Uh, I won't go into detail there, but basically highlights the fact that artificial intelligence is more complex and more of a combination of perhaps multiple machine learning uh, operations combined with each other and then uh, some sort of a user interface to make that uh, connection to the outside world, for instance, via chatbots or, or voice search. So a little bit in depth then uh, on predictive marketing. And this is what we mean by predictive marketing. So a set of marketing techniques that leverage machine learning and visual analytics to determine the, and implement the marketing and sales activities that have the highest probability of succeeding. So doing predictions based on existing data uh, and then leveraging this information to perform actions that would uh, make the process that you're trying to optimize or the conversions that you're trying to make happen more probable uh, and to tilt uh, the um, probability in your favor by influ influencing the factors uh, that go into into that process. So that is basically the machine learning uh, component in the marketing and sales activities. So trying to look at the probabilities and then actually implementing marketing and sales operations uh, as per usual based on that information. So what do you need for predictive marketing? Uh, this is looking at uh, like an ecosystem uh, perspective there. Uh, master plan basically means that you know what you're doing and you have a set target in mind, uh, a business impact or a uh, business problem that you're trying to solve, for instance, um, new business generation, uh, churn reduction, uh, upsell, cross-sell operations. Uh, how can you basically make that into a plan for uh, predictive uh, modeling as well as what will you do with marketing operations in that domain once you would have that information. So master plan, of course, you will need data and access to data. This could be one-off manual operations, uh, but 
if you are to run uh, this continuously, you would have need to have integrations and then continuous access to the correct data. Of course, predictive analytics there, so machine learning component with your data that you feed into that. Uh, but uh, it, nothing will happen unless you have then content or the marketing sales components of, of these processes uh, and trying to get the actual operations conversions happening with your content marketing um, that you're trying to achieve here. And effective execution is basically then the, the whole shindig, the operation from uh, uh, data gathering, integrations, uh, and analytics, and then triggering the correct uh, operations in marketing or sales uh, as automatically as possible. So those are the components when we are talking about uh, predictive marketing as an ecosystem. So as one might guess, all of this uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence operations, it rises and falls with your data. So data is very, very much at the heart of all these operations. Not a surprise there, but uh, here's a few challenges and requirements in that sense that you must keep in mind when uh, starting. So if the, these are the five problems that we most often run into, uh, which then result in um, data work, uh, data manipulation, manipulation, transformation and enrichment processes. So if uh, your data does not reflect the objective, uh, it might and most probably will not be useful. So if your process that you're trying to predict here does not uh, depend on, say, weather information, um, if you have weather information, weather data past 20 years, that's great, but you can't utilize in this uh, process if it does not impact your process at all. So it needs to be relevant to the actual objective that you're trying to do here. Um, mismatching timeframes. So basically, if usually as you're gathering data from multiple sources, multiple processes that have to do with uh, the operation that you're trying to predict here, uh, if different systems have been gathering data from processes from a different time frames, even though it would be same people in there, uh, that would cause problems because uh, it's not uh, you can't utilize that in in same uh, data set in a specific time frame. So mismatching time frames is a very common common problem, as as well is a fact for. Um, missing values and attribute noise, which basically is the data quality within individual fields. Many dependencies then here mean that if, for instance, you would have a process that always triggers uh, some default values into multiple fields, that causes dependencies um, in your data, which might skew the results uh, and make the predictions less uh, likely to be true. So. Basically, your data will never be as good as you would want it to be, So, but do not let that hinder your process because um, we've gotten quite far with uh, poor uh, starting situations. Here's a few slides on key data preparations. I won't go into these as we're actually running a little bit behind schedule. I'll leave these here for a few seconds, but basically data enrichment, uh, data tagging, gathering, all that is very, very important. Uh, and which we then quite often after first rounds return to do to get a better data set gathered uh, after the first operations. Predictive marketing process and the requirements then seven steps of this process uh, program targets, that's basically the mar master plan in the sense that what are you trying to achieve? What's the business goal? Then uh, there is the data work, so gathering, transformation, and then loading into the predictive analytics part here, uh, which is the machine learning part, and insights gathering, then the next one there, which is basically analyzing everything you've done, gathered, and trying to find meaningful insights that you could use in marketing and sales to then action uh, or, or induce action that would uh, tip the scale in your favor 
uh, once you would have some predictions available. Uh, then you would implement the actual marketing or sales operations, then me measure, uh, learn and optimize as, as usual. And basically, if you've done a few rounds of these um, one-off pr projects or uh, manual operations, after this you could make that into a continuous program that it's uh, constantly looking at the data and doing these analysis and machine learning uh, day by day uh, instead of uh, one-off manual operations. I've uh, mapped the core competencies there as well as phase durations to get some sense how big uh, these operations are contrasted to each other. So uh, the data work here, so basically actually the data ETL extraction, transformation and loading there, that is probably the most work intensive part of, of, uh, of all of this. Uh, but that is gathered or, or included in the data science part there um, in the four to eight weeks. And this is always subjective to what you're actually doing, but to get some sort of a uh, evaluation criteria that how much uh, are we talking about here in terms of project scopes. Uh, also in the sense of cost, um, I did uh, an, an analogy to uh, similar processes that you might be familiar with. So uh, program targets, one, one day workshop cost uh, and resources, uh, then the data science part, two to four weeks uh, of data science resource. Uh, the marketing part, well, basically, that's a traditional marketing campaign operation without the media costs. Then continuous program, that would be com comparable to a CRM integration project there. So this basically is a typical roadmap for a company implementing uh, predictive marketing, uh, starting off with a predictive analytics capability assessment, uh, which is just looking at okay, with my data, with my machines, with my processes, how far could we get and what sort of predictions could we get out of this and what sort of results uh, could we do? So that's a lot of very much data and process oriented audit, so to speak. And then usually at that point, you find uh, data quality gaps or, and you would start some uh, data quality or enrichment project uh, to that particular, to that per project and not like a full blown data uh, operation. Then would you would have your first machine learning models and predictive analysis as a one-off project to get you some results and sales and marketing um, started with actioning on, on that information which is basically the pilot uh, result verification. So trying to then do actions and gauge their success compared to for instance like a random take or so forth to see, okay, how much added value is all of this prediction and uh, machine learning putting into our processes. And then uh, timed frequent predictive analysis with existing machine le learning model is basically doing the same analysis each day, for instance, and getting a new um, value for your predictions for all your database, uh, a new lead score, for instance, each day. So automating that uh, as well as automating the data exports and integration. So you need to feed uh, your frequent predictive uh, models with uh, data each time. So making that automated is number six there. And then number seven, automated sales and marketing operations. That is basically the uh, operations triggered by this predictive analysis. So making that automated as well instead of manual. And then basically it's coming to uh, like a closing loop there that then you try to optimize with higher quality and richer data. Uh, and then you would repeat perhaps with another business problem and link multiple predictive processes together to ultimately form some sort of a artificial intelligence system of your own. Well, basically the first steps, if you are looking to start um, with predictive marketing, um, you would need a business problem that would be hard to solve manually or uh, that has been bugging you for, for a, a very long time and uh, there might be some different opinions on said topic and you would want to utilize science to, to prove uh, is it this or that. So think of a business problem that would be uh, measurable uh, and then what processes and characteristics impact said business problem uh, would be second there 
which feeds into your assessing of the data that you would require. So are you capturing currently any data on said processes or could you buy that data somewhere else? So you need data from all of those processes. And then if you do have this data, you need to define or find out in which systems do the, do, does this data live in and who can access it for you. Um, and then you would start your actually data, data gathering process, uh, all the relevant data um, and determine different operations, different characteristics of this data um, listed here, those five um, five properties. I won't go into detail because we're a little bit running short on time here. But after that, you would basically have the uh, good starting position for your data scientist to start working uh, with the machine learning part and, and getting you uh, analysis based on, on, on uh, your data set, uh, which is then basically the, the process of, of machine learning starting from there and that would carry over to the marketing operations and at this point basically you would already be very very much further along than let's say 90 percent of the companies uh, so this is actually quite much work with with the data uh, gathering um, but it's still very very doable and uh, gathering the data if you get to this point uh, you're very very likely to succeed uh, with all the operations so that would be a good good situation um, we also have I need to mention here as this uh, ebook image here on the right that we have a, an ebook on our website to which we have a link in the very very end here uh, to in-depth information about predict predictive marketing and and the same topics here so please go go find that and and uh, educate yourself even further but uh, a successful project I think I've mentioned quite about um, much of all of this but one thing to highlight is that if if you have one team responsible for the whole project that uh, that is a very um, a factor that is uh, very crucial for uh, the first projects in particular uh, so data extraction and uh, the transformation and manipulation of, of data if there's multiple parties involved in that it might result in miscommunications and so forth which is toxic for then the predictive model capabilities we have some skills listed there but uh, you can't do it alone with data and data science um, competence so you of course need business understanding always throughout the whole process to interpret what this data means and, and what the significance of the, the 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 variables and all that is so so you definitely need that much uh, in in there quickly on how idbbn could help you in in your journey here before we get to questions and answers we basically we're doing machine learning uh, and all kinds of data uh, manipulation and extraction and enrichment operations uh, throughout the board but uh, content recommendation sales prioritizing and product recommendations are the ones where we have most experience with so basically content recommendation uh, quite a self-explanatory there so recommendation engine type of operations sales prioritizing is basically predictive lead scoring so what is the likelihood of which lead uh, to convert to a buying customer creating a machine learning model uh, to support that uh, product re recommendation is then basically the same but for upsell cross-sell purposes not for leads but for existing customers leveraging machine learning there um, this is more in-depth of, of all of these processes and then the questions that um, we're using uh, machine learning to answer um, in each of these categories project offers basically data predictive analytics and predictive model deployment uh, data at the very very core uh, we do predictive readiness audits uh, and data audits in particular uh, looking at the data quality and how one might enrich your data automatically if and when you are a situation that you would want or need a better and high quality data to um, perform 
your operations and, and then better predictions. And then of course the machine learning part uh, there and, and the analysis and doing the insight gathering for what are the most valuable or important variables within your whole process there. So getting insights that if this uh, person is more, most likely to uh, convert here, uh, what operations could we do to tip uh, that in our favor? So doing analysis uh, which is outside of the machine learning domain but still um, and of course deployment and automation so once you would have a working model uh, working predictive operations going on how to automate that so that uh, you get new analysis and then the machine learning is part of your everyday process so uh, predictive environments and infrastructure as a service as well so okay that was a huge blast in sense of uh, ticking away with uh, bullet points there. Tanya, do we have any questions come in from the in interwebs? Actually, we don't have any questions. Hello from me as well. My name is Tanya. And um, at the moment, we don't have any questions yet. Uh, please do send them. I will, I will take note of them and ask them. Uh, we, had a, we had a comment from Harry that uh, one of the really early slides uh, we were missing send time optimization there so he was he was uh, he was missing that in the slides but other than that we haven't had any questions yet so please send questions if you're wondering about something all right thanks harry the very very true there uh, i will add that to the to the deck so that will be there um closer to perfection each time um we will be having these uh, webinars. The next ones will be more case focused. So we will have two, at least two customers of ours coming through and, and uh, presenting their own experiences and outcomes with predictive marketing, machine learning, and, and tying that together with their marketing and sales operations. So talking practical projects, uh, not theory. Uh, what just had the challenges they were they had encountered and uh, how they overcame them and so forth. So, if and when any questions arise later on, you can ask them um, in the the later sessions there. And the data bank area of our website uh, that is basically where you would find the ebook I was referring to. Uh, download that to get a little bit more insights on on this topic but uh, stay tuned definitely for the upcoming webinars on predictive marketing uh, machine learning and, and all that uh, if there's something that you feel we could assist you with or you have some dedicated questions or, or project proposals or requests for projects do contact me or or Matti Aldo Zetela here so our contact details uh, below I think we're at a situation where close enough to the time spent that we uh, told you this was going to carve out of your day. So without further ado, I thank you for the time you spent with us. Hopefully you got uh, out of this what uh, you expected. It was a fast-paced operation. Uh, we will be sending you the materials later on. I thank you and we'll be in touch later.